This is the worst public health crisis. The queues growing outside supermarkets. A normally traffic jammed highway in the city of Wuhan, China, near empty. No cinemas, theaters, football matches. Store shelves nationwide are dwindling or totally empty. Toilet paper is disappearing around the globe. Seems like quite a chaos time. Empty supermarkets, empty streets, everyone has to stay inside. Well, that is everyone except here. <laughs> it looks like no one gives a fuck. Welcome to Monthly News number 38, the Corona edition, live from Bangladesh, Dhaka. And it's uh, busy here, but one thing what they actually do have, although it's very busy, is... That's right, toilet paper. They still have enough of it over here. But, pro tip from Bangladesh, you actually don't really need it. You can just wash your butt with your hands. But honestly, I don't really get it. I mean, Bangladesh or Dhaka is the most dense city in the world, with a lot of people very crowded. So, if there is a virus, it must spread around very quickly here. Also, it's not very hygienic. Um, but yeah, for some reason, no one really seems to care around here. Um, but I would say, if it is here, it would probably be in the entire city within half a day. Because it's ah, everyone is just on top of each other. Um, yeah, so I'm kind of stuck here, actually. I can't uh, really go back to the Netherlands, so I'm here alone. Well, not really alone. I mean, there are people everywhere. Um, but yeah, maybe I'll actually find a place a bit more outside of this dense city. So welcome in a beautiful hotel room. Got a flat screen and some mini bananas. We're basically good to go. So one last thing about the coronavirus. Uh, on a more positive note, that it's kind of impressive to see the changes it brings in the world. So for instance, much less planes are taking off. Or if you see the map of China, you see much less pollution because we just produce less and commute less. It's just kind of impressive to see that if we really want to change the world and stop this machine to use less resources, we can actually do it. So I would say keep that in mind for later because right now the priority is on this problem. It's kind of has the highest urgency, but one way bigger problem is still our environment and it's gonna affect way more generations for years to come. It's gonna affect plants, animals, entire ecosystems. So I would say just remember this time where we as a collective human can really make a change and try to keep that collective power to continue to work like this. All right, so back to the news. So this month we released a story hopper video that's all about traveling and how to travel sustainable. Super relevant topic since you can't really travel, um, but it would kill 15 minutes of your quarantine time. So that's, I guess, totally worth it. Which brings me to the next point. Since you have to stay at home, it's the perfect time to do documentation. So mainly for the people that work with precious plastic, they learn stuff on a daily basis. So make sure to document that and share that online. We actually made a guide specifically for this moment right now in the academy. I'll put a link below that show why it is so important for the future of us to uh, share what you learned. So make sure to check that out. This month we actually released a new bazaar for Press Plastic. It's way more powerful, much better functionality. We would write an article in depth that explain all the functions. But for now I would say maybe just check it out. bazaar.pressplastic.com and let us know what you think about it. And the beginning of this month, I was actually traveling with Mattia in India to visit communities for Project Camp. And we visited Aravil, super cool place. And we actually wanted to do a big update on this, but it's a bit delayed due to the coronavirus. So the Project Camp update might come. And when we're traveling around, we always really like to see fresh plastic workspaces to meet the people, see how they work, see what their space looks like. So we have two places. One is Rise and Carry in Sri Lanka and one is uh, Samsara in Chennai in India. So they have their workspace in the middle of the center, right here in this big building. So let me show you what that looks like. Hello Dave. Hey Pat. <laughs> nice having you here in Chennai. Yeah, good to see your space. Yeah, I'll come and take you around, show cool. you our workspace. So you guys are Samsara? Yes, uh, we are Samsara, the recycle company. Uh, my name is Pradyumna. We are from Chennai, India. 
uh, was founded by me and my partner uh, Mridula. Uh, we were architects and designers and we wanted to work with materials that would, you know, uh, deemed waste. So that's when we found precious plastic and uh, the journey has just been amazing, I would say. <laughs> All right, so show us the space. Yes, so um, ours is a mixed workspace. Uh, so we have uh, the shutter, the extrusion, the compression and the injection. Uh, so I'll just take you through uh, a little bit of the extrusion uh, to do. Uh, so we have the V3 extrusion here. Uh, we just added this a little bit of tweak so that we could see the materials from anywhere. And then we have experimented a lot with uh, beams uh, in the recent times. So as here you can see, you know, a hand beaten mold to get a circular tapered beam. We like to slightly complicate and experiment a little. Uh, and uh, making custom uh, sizes of molds. So just basically, using sheet metal and uh, bending sheets so you can see and the same concept uh, we took inspiration from uh, Tim and we made these angled tapered beams as well um, so I'll have Kajol explain a little bit about the color tests that we kind of Hi. do now. Hello. So we do a lot of color samples here for our furnitures and we just take them for our documentation here. So we have done a lot of greens. So if you notice, I've just noted down what color ratio it is. So how much of light green and how much of yellow I've added to get this particular shade of green. So that's how we do for all our colors. So we have a green palette here. We have a bluish green palette here. We have our blues, a lot of blue shades. And then we have done grays here. Yeah. All right. Nice. <laughs> so while all of these were the wonderful parts, we also broke uh, an extrusion screw. Uh, luckily, we found a local person to uh, you know, make this manually for us. So, so this one is made locally. Uh, yeah. So we found a vendor close by who makes, uh, who repairs extrusion screws, and uh, he was kind enough to do one for us. Cool. So, and besides extruding, you also work with the sheet press a lot, right? Uh, yeah, so we uh, took a lot of inspiration from the V4 sheet press. We are fortunate enough to be a part of the V4 team and help out. So, we started now recently working, uh, working a lot with making sheets. We have been also working uh, with the waste that we have, uh, the studio waste. Um, mainly from the extrusion while we are changing colors, making products and uh, the failed products as well. Um, it works well. Uh, able to use much larger chunks of material into this, the pieces that would usually not be able to shed with our shredder. Something we've been experimenting is also to try to bend uh, HTP sheets. A lot of sheets. Indeed. So what do you make with the sheets? Uh, so with the sheets, uh, we make smaller products by you know, CNC cutting them. Uh, the reason we use a CNC cutter is uh, these are slightly more complex uh, to do via hand. So it much, has much more uh, accurate cuts. Uh, so we give this back to our material supplier and uh, he shreds this out and gives it to us uh, as raw material again that goes back into making sheets. All right. And you also have a nice way of stamping products, right? Uh, yeah. So we used to stamp it with a traditionally, uh, by traditionally heating uh, the plastic and then pressing it. Uh, but this took almost 30 seconds to uh, melt the plastic and then stamp it. So it was quite uh, time consuming for a lot of products. Um, so we got an arbor press and uh, we got a mold done, a brass mold, so that we could uh, fast track this process as well. So here, let me just take a small piece. So we get a nice crisp 
um, stamp and it's five seconds per stamp. Made life a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> no burn marks, mainly. Yeah. <laughs> so this is our Ecobar lounge chair that you see. <clears throat> and uh, so originally we were doing a lot of uh, extrusion free flowing uh, products, quite difficult and uh, tested our patients quite a bit. Uh, and then we made some compression products. Uh, right now we're just focusing on uh, beams and sheets. So we make beams uh, and make some furniture, other part legs for the furniture, and sheets for the top. And uh, as you can see, some prototypes here. We also make uh, smaller products like this tray, some coasters, um, all that are CNC cut. Mm, a lot. Uh, yeah, we have all stored them up for the bazaar. Uh, you can find us on the bazaar. Uh, looking forward to be able to recycle a lot more plastic. So everyone that buys a coaster supports you to continue yes. your work, right? Definitely <laughs> Just does. Just making sure people get that. <laughs> so this is the moment you're talking to the YouTube community out there. Do you have anything to mention to the Press Plastic community? Uh, yeah, I would say uh, it's been lovely being part of this community, learning uh, together, uh, exploring possibilities with designing of these products and uh, just learning a lot uh, when it comes to this. Uh, thank you uh, and uh, looking forward to seeing a lot of great stuff out there and let's keep making. All right, cool, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, today I'm in a beautiful Sri Lanka. I came uh, here to visit uh, Rice and Carry, these guys over here, and they've been working with precious plastic for the past four or five years. Uh, now I came down to say hi and I'm going to ask him a few questions to learn more about the project. So here we are uh, with uh, Henry, the founder of uh, Rice and Carry and Wasteless Bay, and Sufi, the manager of uh, Wasteless Bay. So let me start with you, Henry, and uh, maybe give us a quick overview of what you guys are doing here. Um, so what we do here is um, we have identified what the biggest problem is for waste management in this area and that is um, plastic bottled water. There's probably like 5,000 tourists in this place uh, in uh, full occupancy. It's a tropical area, you have to drink water. Um, all the travel guides have for decades told tourists in Sri Lanka only drink bottled water, that is the only safe water. So what we do here is we um, provide the alternative, which is the water refill station. We process the plastic bottles, we bale them and compact them for transport to um, a professional recycling facility. And we have the precious plastic machinery. So we use the bottle caps, shred them in the precious plastic shredder and then um, uh, make nice products for the tourists here um, to um, realize that they are part of the problem but they can also be um, the solution to the problem or help uh, mitigating the problem. Sophie, maybe you want to talk us a little bit about the operations here. What kind of machines do yeah. you have and what do you do? Yeah, we actually we collecting all the PET from the PET uh, caps, bottle caps and lids. We are making a product with uh, uh, like a wax comb and then we are making buckles and we are making uh, uh, key rings and this stuff we are making here, key tags. And everything we are making a producting here with the three injection molding machine okay. and we have a molding like a three type of molding we have it and also we have a special type of molding it's called razor handles so we are making with that okay. that is very interesting things and then uh, our boys are working really love to work with the injection molding machine because they are hanging okay. they're manually working so that uh, should be they're so happy to work with that kind of stuff because they're playing with this so normally uh, and actually the people are walking around here locals they come and what they're doing the boys and mm. they come and see what the machine, what you're doing with this machine. So what happened to this plastic? Uh, where are you collecting this plastic? And like this, mm. they are educating. Actually, we started this to educate our locals. The okay. local might be get some idea. Then they will be uh, going to do in future the best way uh, as Arugambe. Okay. And uh, I am very curious about to, to know more about your collection because you have this very beautiful tuk-tuk and I want to know you were saying, telling me that you have uh, up to 60 beans 
uh, in different uh, hotels and restaurants. So yeah. tell me a bit more about this yeah. part. So everybody loves the vehicle because it looks super fun. There's our cartoons are drawn on it and all that. Uh, our driver's not very happy with it because it's very <laughs> slow, um, but everybody else loves it. So there's a, it's like a three wheeler. There's a big cage um, on the back. So uh, because like the problem is the volume of PT waste. Um, so it's quite a big cage. And then uh, we distributed like big bins um, to um, over 60 hotels here. Some places also have their own collection uh, um, uh, um, barrels or bins. And then um, in high season, we can stop every day at every bin and empty it all the time. Um, off season, um, we wait for the call mm. and then we go and um, pick up the PET. And then here, um, we just remove the bottle caps perfectly clean because most of them are water bottles so mm. no glue or no other um, chemicals involved so it's relatively safe um, to identify everything um, yeah so that works really well um, and you were saying you're collecting about a ton a month more or less yeah pretty much um, we started um, 16 15 months ago so our collection is growing and in these 15 months we did 11 tons 2019 was not a good year for tourism in Sri Lanka, mm. um, so not many people came here. Um, but it's no problem to get like one ton of PT a per month. Mm. I think we should more aim to like three, more than three tons a month just collection. Still impressive. It's definitely there. Still impressive. It's definitely out yes. there. Yeah. And obviously with precious plastic you can't work with PT. So what do you do once you receive these tons of uh, PT? What's your yeah, so the, the um, bottle caps uh, we remove and we use in the precious plastic machines. Uh, the PET um, we send to a state-of-the-art big recycling factory outside of Colombo. After baling it? After compacting it because transport is a cost factor so it needs to be as small as possible. So we send it to that factory and that is one of two factories in the world as far as I know that can turn shredded PET bottles into polyester yarn. Okay. And uh, maybe, um, Sophia, do you want to maybe tell me a bit about the team involved into here in Wesley Space, but also in Rice and Carry? How many people are involved? Uh, and we are involving uh, three people here. Uh, actually full time. Full time working. Okay. And then 28 people, uh, the women are working with the Rice and Carry. Okay. Our product we are giving to Rice and Carry. They are enjoying to showing with our uh, product. For example, we are giving a buckles. The buckles, they are making a different type of product with that. Uh -huh. So they are so happy to be with our part of. We are working with uh, to love to do. We are, we are working with the two benefits. One is we are getting a salary at the job. Uh -huh. Another one is we are helping to the nature. To clean up the, 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 beaches. the beaches and all the entire the area. And giving a cleaner future to this yeah. little boy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, but I'm sure it's not all easy. Uh, maybe no. can you tell us about, <laughs> yeah, what are the biggest challenges of uh, setting up a precious plastic uh, workstation in, uh, in Sri Lanka? Um, the, the, the biggest challenges or oh, that is what what the mistake we did in the, in, in the beginning is you get really excited you see precious plastic and you're like oh, well, I want the oven and I want to make bowls and I want to make this and that and um, you have to know what's the best product for the market I have the easiest access to mm. and then try to make that really really good because in the end sustainability only comes from being also financially sustainable so yeah. It is tricky. Um, you can put a better profit margin because you also have to. It's manual injection molding, so the products are more expensive. So you have to find a good um, customer group that is willing to pay a higher price. Mm -hmm. uh, and luckily here with tourism, we have that. Tourists are very conscious about um, the potential damage they do to a place. So it's actually the perfect target audience to kind of change behavior and also um, as our customers for the products. Okay. All right, um, a tip for someone that wants to start a precious plastic workspace around the world. What, mean, ki what kind of tip would you give? First of all, they need to identify the plastic, which kind of plastic can be recycled. Okay. So they can use that type of plastic, so it will be reducing. So that's okay. Identifying the, the plastic available plastic near type you. Type of plastic. Okay, the one from you? Yeah, just repeat um, uh, what we were just talking about. Um, Focus. Focus, like do one thing really good.
I think that's easier said than done, though. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Failure absolutely. is also um, just inherent. That's part of it. Yes. It's just what happened. All right. So on focus, I would uh, conclude this uh, beautiful interview. I thank you guys for your time, and back to you guys in uh, in the Netherlands. Bye. Ciao. All right, everyone. Community news. So actually a while ago we started um, working on some how-tos already with some community members also to see how this whole process goes and to develop that tool. Um, so Der and Pemika from BOPE made a design for this interlocking brick. Yeah, exactly, that one. And created a how-to how to make the mold for this brick. And it's an injection mold um, for yeah this brick which can be interlocked and so you can build some constructions or installations or um, use it as a flower pot or something like that. So that's cool. And Andre from El Tornillo shared his techniques on making injection molds for broom hangers and these wall packs so you can hang things on the wall. And as he has a lot of experience in making uh, yeah, injection molds, he also put together some tips and procedures um, from his experience on making injection molds. So there is a lot to learn from um, and the cool thing is even if you don't want to replicate exactly those products you can use the how-tos also just to learn from those techniques and um, use them as a base to get more ideas uh, for other products and techniques. Then it's also super exciting to see that more people are building the V4 machines. So the Shredder Pro, Extrusion Pro and Sheet Press. And there's actually the first finished shredder in China. He also uses it for uh, meat. <laughs> so, um, okay, but um, at least it seems to work. So that's cool. So there's one new tool in the Academy, which we didn't really announce yet, which is the logo creator. And we made that one to make it more easy for the community to make their own precious plastic logo. Actually, people found it and uh, lots more precious plastic logos have been coming up. So it's really nice to see that people actually like to use it and the, that it's in use. And to end with, this month we made our first ever global impact survey to find out some more numbers of our community, which was quite an exciting thing for us because we always wanted to know more about what our impact might be as a community. Thank you for everyone who took part. And once it's done, we will share the report to, to share what we found out. Yeah, take care, wash your hands. Okay, I guess it's time to stop. Um, yeah, take care and be thankful for the little things in life, um, like sun in the Netherlands. That's quite special. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you.